Hey everybody, welcome back. So we are going to talk about uh, how to mask an object in Premiere Pro. And I'm working on a Mac. We are going to take a look at how to remove objects. Now here's a shot. Uh, this is um, one of the characters talking to another, uh, but boy is that light switch up there distracting. So how to mask and remove objects in Premiere Pro. Now this is stationary. We're gonna do another video on how to track and mask. So let's go over to our effects tab at the top. Right here, go ahead and click effects. First thing we wanna do is we see our clip down here in our timeline. So we've been editing and we're like, oh, I need to get rid of that. So what we wanna do is you wanna go down here to your timeline, click the first image, make sure this box is highlighted, your timeline. You're gonna hold down on a Mac, you're gonna hold down Alt Option, and you're gonna click and drag up and hold it down. You'll see it makes a copy of it and then just let it go. Boom. So now we have a copy right on top of the original version. So Premiere works in a layer system, which means whatever is on top is gonna to take precedence, right? So as you layer things, adjustment layers and whatnot, um, what is on top will be seen um, over top of the rest. In this case, this top image is what the audience is gonna see. This bottom image is what we have to work with. So to mask an object, we're gonna click on the top one. We wanna be working here. We're gonna go over to the effect controls. If you don't see it, you can find it. Just scroll over using these arrows and you'll find effect controls. We want to go down to opacity. And if it looks like this, you just click this little arrow and it'll drop right down. And here you're going to see our mask options. So let's click whichever one we want to use. If it's something circular, you can click that square. We're going to draw. I'm a fan of drawing what I want. Um, so we're going to go click the drawing icon. Now you see it created a mask. Let's go over and let's draw around our light switch. Boom. And I know what you're thinking, nothing happened. Well, that's because we told the computer, the program where we want the mask to be, but we didn't tell it what to do. So we're gonna go over here, back to our effect controls and click inverted. Now, if there was a different image on the bottom uh, of these two, you would see it right now through this hole. Um, but what you're really seeing is the light switch underneath this image that the audience is seeing. So. In order to get that light switch gone, we're gonna go down and click the image underneath, and you're gonna go back up to effect controls where position and scale are. And basically, if you watch the light switch, you're just gonna find a new position. And voila. Now, uh, you can go up and down, you can go to the side, you see how the colors change depending on the sunlight of where that image is. So we want it to link up, right? but you're, you see we're seeing a bit of the window and the edge of the light switch and the image underneath. So how do we get rid of that? I like to go over here and I like to go in, um, zoom in as much as I can. So we're gonna go about 130. Let's do that and voila. Well, all that happened is we zoomed so the image moved. So we just have to go back up here. We're still working on this bottom one and we're just gonna move it back. And we're gonna get it just right, boom. That looks pretty good. But you know, to the eye, and you know, to the trained eye and some of the untrained eye, you can still see there was a square there. So what can we do? Well, also be careful with scaling. If you go too, if you zoom in too much, you're going to start getting um, more pixelated in this box. And when you color grade, color correct, you may notice it, just depending on the quality of your footage. So I like to get it just enough to where we can get it filled, and we're still in the same region of where that light switch was. So let's go back to this top image. This is where the mask is. This is where we're going to work. And you'll see mask feather. Let's go ahead and up that. You can drag it or type. I'm going to go, I have a feeling, around 16. Boom. And what did that do? It just softened the edges a bit. And then you can expand your mask as well. So you're telling the program, hey, you've got a little bit more to work with. Uh, it, as we increase this number, you're telling it, hey, the mask can go a little bit bigger. You can take up a little bit more room or you can take up a little bit less room. So we just want to we just want to find a sweet spot there. Then as you as you keep finessing, you see this turns into a finesse game. You want to keep going back and forth to size and position and really just feeling out, okay, where is the right amount? That's looking pretty good. So anyway, guys, that is how you mask and remove objects that you don't want on a stationary shot. So this is a shot static shot that is not moving. So you wouldn't do this if the camera's you know, shaking or moving all around, then you'd have to track the light switch because it's moving in the frame. And then you'd put the mask over that, which we'll do in another video. But this is just your normal, 
how to mask in a non-moving static shot, voila, you would never know that's gone. And just as a side note, when you color grade or color correct this, if you do it in Premiere Pro, you wanna make sure you do it to both layers, okay? Otherwise this happens, right? So that's because the layer you're seeing underneath, remember we talked about the layer system, is still the same color as the original. So you're gonna to have to go to this, and then that was negative 1.7 in our exposure, and boom, now it matches, right? So you're just gonna to wanna to make sure you copy and paste the attributes to the lay all the layers so that everything comes through and matches. And voila, we've removed the light switch. All right guys, thanks so much. See you on the next video.